Why don't they, why don't they make films like that anymore, Ron? Hmm? Pardon? <laughs> why don't they make films like that anymore, Ron? No, I think the reason is that first, straight after we did this film, there was a recession in the business. <laughs> and secondly, um, the current fashion in musicals, uh, according to Mr. Lloyd Webber, who is the, the great success of all time, Absolutely. is that we don't anymore write books with um, uh, musicals with book, music and lyrics. We through compose. And through composition means that you have a libretto and music. There's no book. So the critics can't knock it because they don't know what it's about. That was a joke. <laughs> See, I told you it was cerebral. Stony ground here tonight. And, they, and also, they make very bad films. It's an it's a unfortunate fact that all these um, through composed um, stage hits make bad films like Jesus Christ Superstar and um, Godspell. For instance, after the success of the film of, of Oliver, which was an enormous success and deservedly, and you the adulation you enjoyed. Surely Hollywood was beating a path to your door at that time. Oh, they were, yeah. And why did you beat a path in the other direction? I took the wrong plane, actually. <laughs> That's no, the reason... how careers go up in smoke. <laughs> the, the reason was, the reason was I got this strange dichotomy, and I choose my words carefully, even though I don't know what they mean. Or, <laughs> You're not going to ask anybody to spell it here, are you? Yeah. D-I-C-H-O-T-O. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got this unfortunate split in my career. It's, it's an unusual career in that I've always um, acted and written. I love writing as much as acting. And um, as soon as I get any smell of success, as I did with Oliver in 1960, as I did with the film in 67, I just go away from it. I sort of go into the library and start writing another musical or a book. It was. You did have the opportunity. You, you know, you, you were nominated for the Oscar and all the rest of it. You, you went there and I, with all the stars and presumably all the producers wanted to know and you just upped and left. I didn't. I didn't. I kept going back. But I kept going back to the library as well. I didn't... It, it, you see, there's this strange thing about success. I don't run away from any place. I run away from the pressures of what they call success, which is a very destructive force. Because when you're successful, everyone wants a piece of you, as you know yourself. And everybody wants to kill you as well. Yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> but they, they do. They want, they want to take you over. They want to own you. They want to run your life. Everyone wants you to be theirs. And if you've got any kind of integrity, which I know is a dirty word, you like to still be your own man. You must be the you envy know. of some very successful Hollywood stars, in a sense that you, you preserved your integrity. I think most of them thought I was an idiot. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Now, I remember once having a conversation with Edward G. Robinson, that great actor, yeah. great actor, who was very upset because um, he was, he was the big box office star at Warner Brothers. He was the one that brought the money in, him with Bogart and the others. <clears throat> and the man that was getting all the kudos was Paul Muni, the actor. You know, Paul Muni played all the Louis Pasteur. And um, he was telling me that he would have loved to have played King Lear. He never got the chance because the world never gave him the chance. The world, you, the public, you push us into pigeonholes. We have to dance to your, to your whims. Go on, get out of here. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You'll get no jelly babies tonight. What? If you get them, you're going to crazy for jelly the babies. Old... <laughs> <laughs> jelly babies. Is this... What? Yeah. But, but because of this... It... <laughs> Here I am, here I am conducting high-sounding talk. Dichotomy, integrity. Dichotomy. <laughs> and you're sticking jelly babies up your ears. I didn't try that. <laughs> Best way to do an interview. I'll save them. Yeah. But uh, if, could you be lured back to the movies? Could you be lured back to a musical? I would be lured back to anything. I mean, um, of course I would be. Just a matter of getting the right kind of um, project. I've turned down a few things that weren't good, and I think that's um, not silly, is it? That's not being an idiot. No, no, it isn't. Providing no. you, your own judgment is uh, that you're confident that, that you're always going to be right. Well, how can you ever tell? But that's it. Yeah, I know. We've come to an impasse. 
His hands are going quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Should I put the teeth back in? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a difficult thing to answer because you look back, over your, look back over your career and you think, did I do right, did I do wrong? Nobody ever knows because you take it step by step. And every decision, every choice you make, you think is right at the time. And then you look back over 20 years. Of course, I started when I was 19. That's, you know, 20 years of a career. And, um, <laughs> and um, you wonder whether you did the right thing. You're endeavouring, I understand, to bring... Because you're a man of many parts. Nearly all of them visible this evening. But it's they, funny, actually, because I'm talking about, <laughs> talking about many parts. I was in um, a well-known store the other day. Um, I can't mention the name because you're not allowed to advertise. No. It was in the men men's department and I bought a tie and the assistant wrapped up the tie and then he looked at me and said, Mr. Moody, he was immaculately dressed, he said, Mr. Moody, I would like to take this opportunity of thanking you for all the pleasure you have given me. <laughs> With that part. <laughs> With that part, he said. <laughs> and I said, what part? <laughs> oh, that part. <laughs> That's what happens all the time. It's the part, isn't it? Was it, it worth telling that story? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily a part of this crowd, but yeah. Anywhere else, it would have been great. What about the one-man show? You got to, you're not going to drag that back, are you? That's how strange you should say that. <laughs> because that is exactly what happened. I mean, it's a series of th three things happened, actually, that made me want to bring it back. The first was that I did um, the Cole Porter evening recently. It was a Sunday evening concert with all these Oh, yeah. Great American stars there. And I did Delightful, Delicious, De Lovely, and I did it as um, it would have been played by the stars of those days, you know, like um, Durante and Groucho and Bing Crosby. And it was an enormous hit, and people said, why don't you entertain again? And I said, no, it's, I'm, I'm t too tired, I can't do that. And then I did a, a, an hour at Barnstable in the North Devon Festival. So I did an hour of the one-man show, and that was a huge success. I mean, I don't like to brag. <laughs> Where the audience is cheering for more, what can one say? <laughs> <laughs> and then, then, straight after this, Tony, Tony Clayton, who was the man that got me to do the one-man show in the first place, said, would you like to do a week at the Key Theatre, Peterborough? <laughs> September the 9th, <laughs> <laughs> for a week, <laughs> Key Theatre. Uh, not Peterborough. <laughs> Oh, Peterborough. So you may do it. Well, I'm, I'm doing it, yeah. Yes. Try and to I'm stop, gonna, you I'm know. I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on. His marriage has marriage and fatherhood, which came to you in the twilight of your years. Has this been a source of... Twilight! <laughs> <laughs> has this been a source of inspiration to you? I'll throw those jelly babies at the audience, <laughs> anyway. In the twilight of my years... <laughs> How it suits I you. I just made that up. I know you did. <laughs> Damn good, too. Would you like me to do my Captain Hook? Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, Captain Hook. We're having everything tonight. <laughs> Where's Steven Spielberg? He could... He's doing Captain Hook. Oh, yes. You'll feel a bit left out. I was furious. Dustin Hoffman playing Captain Hook. <laughs> and do me a favour. He's oh, too young. Captain Dustin Hoffman does it all, but in, inside his nose like that. Dustin Hoffman says, hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. How can he do Captain Hook? How's Captain, <laughs> how's Captain Hook go, then? Well, Captain Hook, um, I learnt an awful lot about villainy, which, um, you know, I tend to play lots of villains, and I learnt an awful lot about villainy in Captain Hook, and you notice the way I'm carefully avoiding any comment on marriage and children at my late <laughs> stage of life. Um, you see, when I first did Captain Hook, I did it like a kind of, um... Uh, How still the night is! Nothing sounds alive! Now is the hour when children in their homes are abed! Their lips bright brown with the Bourneville chocolate. <laughs> their tongues drowsily searching for belated hula hoops. <laughs> Housed insecure. I can go on for hours. Anyway, course, it, it didn't work. It didn't oh. work. The children did not hiss. Now, you must get the children to hiss. So the next time I did it, I tried it as a medieval hobgoblin. I sort of changed my attitude. I took a handful of jelly babies like that. <laughs> that was my motivation, the handful of jelly babies. Now is the winter. Oh, that, oh sorry, that's the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> and I came forward very slowly like this. See? See? It's working, it's working. <laughs> Let's have a few boos as well, don't we? Boo! That's, that's, that's to give you an idea. Have a few jelly babies. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I've never heard anybody so booed Muted. and hissed for so little in all my life. <laughs> It doesn't take much to get you hissed, does it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Too late now, the damage is done. <laughs> Who else but Ron Moody? What a pleasure to have you. Well. You don't get paid for this, you know. <laughs> I've got three kids at home. <laughs> They're starving. <laughs> Could say good night to your children, that one. Good night, Catherine. Good night, Daniel. Good night, Matthew. See you at good seven. Night, Therese. Good night. <laughs>